Hello and welcome to Penelope's Chinwag. It's lovely to see you again, or if you're a new subscriber, welcome. It's just a chit chat about my family life. Often I have a fascinating fact about nature. I show you what I've been crafting. I, I show you where I've been, if I've been out for a walk or, or visited somewhere. Usually I haven't visited anywhere. I've just been out for a walk. That's what we tend to do. Um, my mum comes on sometimes and says a bit about her history. Pete does that too, my husband. And so it's an eclectic mix of goodness knows what basically. So welcome if you decided to join me. I'm so happy to see you. So that's the introductions out the way. What's this week's episode about? I'm going to show you what I've been making. I've got a poem to read you that my friend wrote and uh, I've completely forgotten it. We got uh, a bookcase round from mum's this week because she's got a, you know, a little trolley thing now and my mum's got this very long house and to move from, you know, that part of the house to that part of the house, it's a good walk. Everybody says it's a good walk, whether you're young or elderly. Anyway, when she's carrying things and that, so I've got a beautiful, I mean a beautiful indoor, are they called rollators? Beach down the sides. It's a love, it, well, it looks like a piece of furniture, not one of those big black things, you know because mum doesn't go out uh, apart from coming round here and she's as happy as well she's so happy with it so anyway the bookcase that was in the hall up that end of the house it, it was in the way really so we've got it in our hall now and rather beautiful it looks too we're thrilled to bits with it of course that meant moving a lot of the other furniture around in our uh, house and that meant a backache for the next few days. <laughs> Why do we do it? We just think, oh, we can do that. I can do that. But actually, it takes its toll now. Anyway. So, of course, I'm clearing out the bookcase. I got rid of a lot of novels um, that we've read, we've had over the years. And my son-in-law took those for his friends. So that was good. None of it was wasted. And so, clearing out the bookcase, I found this little book. And I noticed that my friend had written a poem about my chickens. So it was some time ago, completely forgotten it. So I'm going to read you that. I've got, what have I got? I've got the things I've been making. Oh yes, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what that is? Can you see? Can you see my new boy? Yeah, Charlie. He's a chimp. And what's making me sneeze is I've stuffed him with K-pop. It's the most beautiful stuff. I love K-pop. But boy, does it get up the nose. So I've got to give a good old hoover here. Anyway, here's Charlie. I'll introduce him to you later. But Pete said, oh, you've finished your monkey. And call me, well, I'm not going to say thick. And that was my little girl. My darling little girl, she said to her dad once, I think it must have been what had been said to her at school, Dad, I may be thick, but I'm not stupid, am I? We said you're not thick either. <laughs> so that's one of our family sayings. So I was going to say, I may be thick, but I'm not stupid. But how do I know the difference between a monkey and a chimpanzee? Because that's what he is, a chimpanzee. So I've got some other things that I've finished here. I've got the poem to read to you. And then I've got a little film about, well, it's another slice of family life, really. Um, my daughter came to visit with, unexpectedly, her daughter, my granddaughter, um, who's expecting my great-grandson in February. So they came to visit. And that was lovely. That was really lovely. Then on Saturday, my brother came to visit with his family, some of his family, and my other daughter, Nicola, popped in with her husband. Tommy was supposed to come. That's my great-grandson. Nicola has got a daughter, Lois. 
who's got Tommy. Anyway, Tommy couldn't come. He was, well, here's another funny thing. In our family, we don't say snot. We've never said snot. And we had a little discussion about it afterwards. Snot. I mean, if I'd said snot when I was a little girl, I'd have got told off. You don't say snot. Oh, I'm full of cold. I got a lovely uh, message from Lois. Sorry I can't come and see Chris Nan, but uh, baby's full of snot, bless him. <laughs> that made us chuckle all day. Anyway, he is still full of cold, but um, his temperature isn't spiking. However, before his cold, um, he did. they did take a little film he was visiting his nan and he took his first steps and um, someone was filming it. So I've got that to show you. So that's what this week's... Oh, and I've got the cake to show you. That's right. Oh, dear. Where should we start? Right. Oh, yes, I've got another thing to tell you, to show you, my recipe. Well, I have shown you in, earlier, in an earlier um, episode... When Anne visited a couple of weeks ago, she tried the chocolate cake and that prompted me to have a mouthful. And I said to Pete, do you know I can taste the bicarbonate of soda in this? I think there's half a teaspoon of bicarb in it. And so I said to him, I'm going to make it again for Chrissy, my brother, and his family. I thought they'll all love that. No, guess what they said? Oh, sorry, Pen, we don't like caramel. I mean, who on this earth doesn't like caramel? Me and my mum were addicted to it. So is Pete. He thinks this is the best cake I've ever made. <laughs> Which means he wants copious slices. Anyway, first of all, I mixed up uh, brown sugar, light brown sugar and butter. Then I put in three eggs and the flour. Then it's um, the uh, vanilla essence. It says buttermilk. Well, I make my own. All you need to do is pour out the milk, put a couple of drops of lemon juice in. If you've got a lemon, great. If not, I keep the bottle just to make the um, buttermilk. And melt 70 grams of chocolate. Pop that in. and mix it all round very well and then bake it 170 mine takes 20 minutes in my oven I did use the oven <clears throat> I'm going to try and see if I can do it in the air fryer but because they were coming I didn't want to do a testing I just wanted to have one made you know and so pop it in the oven 170 for me 20 minutes and then while it's still warm, spread the salted caramel on and melt the rest of the chocolate, 30 grams, on the top. And I didn't put the bicarbonate of soda in <coughs> because <coughs> I didn't like the flavour of it. I could taste it and it came up, it rose just as well. And, and it was lovely. Well, Pete said it was lovely. He's the, he's the taste tester here. While we're talking about cakes, um, do you remember last week I showed you the uh, fruit cake that I made in the air fryer? So delicious. Well, I'll just pop a picture up here of what the inside looked like. Well, my son-in-law who came last week, he, um, he took, yeah, he took a quarter of it away. Um, uh, my other son-in-law and daughter are coming next Saturday and I expect he'll take a big chunk away too because if you love fruit cake and your wife doesn't like it well it doesn't get made does it but it was really beautiful here's the photo of it and I put marzipan on the top with the fruit so that went down a treat a real treat so what else have I got to show you oh yes um one of my viewers Diane I think uh, she's making the dust of snow and you know I can really recommend this but the pattern does show it really really long and I didn't do it really really long um, because well 
I'm not that tall. And so I have counted this numerous times. Oh, let me just say one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I did twelve, but I did knit one for my daughter the same length, and I've knitted one for a friend, but I did that much longer because she's she's five foot six or something, you know, much taller than me. This is all Ellie of Craft House Magic, all her wool. And uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what it looks like with 12. I suppose I put it on the other way. Let's put it on front ways and then have it coming down. If you're taller than me, you might want it a little bit longer. I've often thought, shall I, oh, shall I just have made it a couple more longer? And sometimes I think, yes. I might, but that's how it is, just to show you. But it's it's scrummy anyway, it's so warm. So yes, that's the dust of snow. I've started the front of the jumper. I've done the two sleeves in the back. So now I'm on the front of this, and I'm going to I'm going to get this done. I, I, oops, what's that? That's how I feel. I want to get this done now for her. Here's the pattern, Hamilton, Hamiltonian, Catherine Folker. There's the pattern. So yes, I want to get the front, so that's that's what I'm knitting. Oh, i tell you what else I bought. I bought one of these. When I was up in Scotland with Dolly, she had one of these. And, you know, I'd never buy one because I've seen them at shows and thought, oh, shall I get one? Let me make it, it goes right down low. But but I tried it when I was there. And th this is super, even for knitting, you know, and you have it, it's just super. And the light is gorgeous. So I treated myself to one of those neat, Neath, or oh, neat fee, F I N E A T F I, and um, yeah, well, you can see how lovely and bright that is. But it's not over your head, hurting your eyes. It's down here where you need it, so that when I'm doing, well, let me show you. This is what I've been doing. Another, get this out of the way. Hold that. It moves easily. That's it. I've made another macaron and there it is, a little bee flying about. I enjoyed doing that, they don't take long. Uh, on the back I've got fabric that I made uh, a bag from and it sparkles at night. All these little spits sparkle at night. It's rather pretty. So it'll show up in your bag. Oh, and I put that in for the middle. Now that's a larger size than I have been making. And I've really... Well, I'm going to make a few of them. Do you remember that was the one I did before? So that's the difference in size. So you can get quite a bit more in that. So, yes, I'm gradually filling up the dish that I wanted to fill up for mum. And then I have had a request. Ruby asked me to, she loves ladybirds. And she saw some fabric with ladybirds on in a quilt that was downstairs. And so I said I'd make her one with ladybirds on. Um, and I finished the quilt. Well, Alison's finished the quilt for me. As you know, it was finished. Let me show you a close-up and then I'm going to take a photo and put it up and show you. Do you remember we did it on point? Well, you didn't do it. I did it on point. So I've got that round the edge, let's say. That. It's ever so hard to show you. I have to peep. <laughs> and then we've got Peter Rabbit. 
going along. Anyway, I'll take a photo and I'll pop it up and show you. I'm so pleased with it. It really does look lovely. Alison does a beautiful job of the quilting. And then on the back, it's a very pretty fabric. I'll, I'll take a close up and show you, but that's what it looks like on the back. And then I chose a blue for the edging. Very pretty. <laughs> so I put a, I'll pop a photo up here so you can have a good look. And then what else? Um, well, here he is. Here's my little chimp, Charlie his name is. Say hello Charlie. Yeah, he's got the most cutest of faces. <laughs> oh dear. He's lovely, aren't you? He's a little one, he's young. They stay with their mums for about six months on their backs, you know, and they're cuddling up to them. But they actually stay with their mums for a couple of years and they learn, if they're females, they learn how to look after their own children from their, from others in the group. And they watch and they look after them and they help them out. And so, so they did say that if they're the youngest in the group uh, um, and the others have all, you know, had their children and grown up, uh, yeah, they do need help in how to bring up a little one. It doesn't come naturally to them. I'm sure it'd come naturally to you when it's your time. Anyway, he's Charlie. He won't be. <coughs> he won't be nursing. Dear me, we still got a frog in the throat. So here he is. Here's his little feet. Well, their arms are longer than their legs in real life, but. Charlie's the same as the others. He's got long legs and he's got shorter arms. You don't mind, do you? So he hasn't got a tail. That's why he's not a monkey. Monkeys have tails. Chimpanzees don't. And they live differently as well. The other thing that's different about a chimpanzee, they've got this terrific shoulder joint. Terrific shoulder joint. So when you see a chimp going through the trees, He's he's using his arms. He's got fantastically strong shoulders and he swings through the trees. But monkeys don't. Have you watched a monkey? They scrabble along the branches. Uh, maybe they ha might hang down by their tails. No tail, strong shoulders. That's what makes you a chimp. Apart from being a different group and yeah. You know, they can learn to, to uh, do use tools. But then they thought that one time, isn't it fantastic, they, they can learn to use tools. But then we know that uh, birds can use tools as well. There's a lot of animals that use, you know, stones and, and all different manner of things. So you're not on your own. Don't think you're ultra clever. Now he's going to have a little hoodie because I think he's a teenager and he's going to have little lace-up boots and I'm not at the moment sending off for any wool I'm going to be using what I've got and I have got a lime green and I have got a dark brown for trousers so I think he's going to have a pair of dark brown trousers and a lime green hoodie so he'll certainly stand out from the crowd won't you but I just love them they're just so gorgeous I've said it so many times before you know you're gorgeous yep so there we are lovely and cuddly Charlie I think that's it for showing you my bits and oh now I'm going to read the poem right okay so this is 2017 she wrote it. 
I hadn't even thought about YouTube then. I've never heard of it. Not at all. It's another world, 2017. My friend's chickens, that's what it's called. Chickens are such funny things, skinny legs and flapping wings. Their eyes are strange. They sort of stare or glare as they cock their head at us, sitting in our chair. My friend and I, well, we sit in the shed. The birds run around us, all getting fed. Into the bushes they peck and they prod, right in the place where Mr Fox stood. Now, Mr Fox, that's another story. But I don't intend to give him any glory. Come along, girls, calls my friend Pen, and they follow, like chicks, behind their mother hen. Chickens make cutest friends. They scratch about in glee. I wonder what they think about when they cock their head at me. Cheeky chappies. Scritch scratch. So my darling friend Kay wrote that in 2017 and sent me this little book. Saw this pen and thought of you. Hope girls' feathers coming through. <laughs> I think they must have been molting. I know how much they mean to you. See you soon, love Kay. So she wrote her own. So thank you very much for that, Kay. It was quite fun finding it after all this time. What else? I was going to say, I read something interesting this week about comparison and the how we can't compare ourselves to others at times. And how it's just not good for us. And also, this was the point I found interesting, that we can compare ourselves to our younger selves. And that doesn't do at all. Because what we could do when we were young doesn't apply now. So why compare ourselves? Oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, yeah, I used to be able to do that. No, don't compare yourself to your younger self, it said. Okay, and don't compare yourself to others. I mean, some people are so talented, aren't they, at this or that? or uh, So what should we do, should, what could we do instead of um, comparing ourselves? Well, we can look at the qualities that other people have got. Say, I don't know, people say about me, you're very patient. And I, I am a patient person. I don't lose it. And... Um, yeah, so I look at other people and think, oh, you know, you've got such courage. Or, yeah, looking at their the, the things that they're good at, being in themselves. Like, it's hard to say, isn't it? Virtues, would we call them virtues? Yeah, what we like about other people. What we value in other people, our values, that's it. And so we could think, well, I'm going to try and work a bit harder at that. And, um, yeah, not copying, but looking at that quality and thinking, that's for me. I'm going to, instead of comparing myself, I'm going to work at that. That's something I'm going to, to aim for. So I'm going to say cheerio now, and what's next? Ah, a little film about, yeah, Tommy's first steps, about my granddaughter showing us her unborn baby in, in, in situ, and my great-granddaughter Mila being read a story from the book that I read to my daughter. That's quite something, isn't it, which we found in the bookcase and my brother now his two boys they were with us all day they got here very early they got the first flight out i think from dublin and those boys i can honestly say played all day with charlie's friends and you'll see that we were absolutely amazed but as my mum said any age loves these and i was very pleased to see them playing with them. They played football, they had a great time. Of course, Charlie wasn't made then, but
but uh, I think he would have joined in and enjoyed himself. But they certainly, they had their clothes taken off, put back on, and uh, Alfie, he went to sleep. He just collapsed in the afternoon. And, uh, yeah, Maisie the pig was cuddled up with him. So it was lovely to see that how much they enjoyed them. All ages enjoy them. What else is on the... Um, oh, we went out on a lovely sunny day, uh, early December. Well, it is early December, isn't it? And the bush was full of sparrows. So that's there at the end. It's lovely to see the sparrows around and they make such a noise. It was a joy. Um, what else is in the film? Well, my son-in-law, um, Mike, he turned up in a woolly that I knitted in 2015. I said, wow, I haven't seen that for a while. He said, well, it's cold enough now. So I show you his woolly because it's very nice. It's a Martin Story pattern, and um, I think it's called Eddystone. But uh, it was a monkey to knit. In fact, Kay, who who wrote the poem, <laughs> she was down visiting when I was knitting the sleeves, and she said, "Come on, I'll do a few rows for you because her knitting is exactly the same as mine." The K, it sort it, the crisscross went right across, and oh, it was just one of those. Um, I think that's about it really. So I'm going to say cheerio and I'm going to see you in the new year. So take care, happy crafting if you're a crafter, if not have a lovely time, keep warm in this weather and well I suppose some of you watch from Australia and New Zealand and it's spring. How lovely is that? I struggle in this weather, I do. So take care. Bye-bye. Let's have a look at that little baby brother then, Otto. <laughs> Otto. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, you gonna come to mummy? Go on. Come on. You're gonna come. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, <laughs> well done. You're gonna come. Good boy. Good boy. Oh.